Hey guys, welcome to the Max Invest YouTube channel. Now, recently there was some big news regarding with Chainlink. It just partnered with Cardano. In today's video, we're going to be discussing if this partnership is good, what it means for Chainlink, what it means for Cardano, and if I'm bullish on this partnership. Of course, if you enjoyed the video, remember to like and subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitter, join the Discord, and remember, nothing in this video is financial advice. So let's get into the video. As we can see by the headline here, on September the 25th, Cardano said that they were going to integrate Chainlink Oracles for their decentralized applications. Now, Cardano is a smart contract blockchain, and as a result, it needs applications to build on top of Cardano. There needs to be heaps of different things building on top of Cardano and giving it value. Cardano has a bunch of decentralized applications lined up, such as Sunday Swap and a few other different things. So, as a direct result, these decentralized applications do need real time data. These decentralized applications do need price feeds and they need a whole bunch of different data. For example, if a decentralized exchange is launching on Cardano, well, they're going to need price feeds. Chainlink is going to need to tell that decentralized exchange what the price of all the assets are at all times. As a direct result, this means that users are always buying the asset at the correct price because Chainlink always delivers the correct data. Now, another example is if you're using a lending and borrowing product such as Aave, and if Aave comes onto Cardano, well, that also needs price data. Whenever you're borrowing something, you need to know the price of that other asset, and essentially every decentralized finance application needs this price data. Now, one of the other things that Cardano have said that they're really looking to do is Cardano are looking to go into the third world countries like Africa, India, and a couple of these other third world continents and countries. Now, Cardano have said that they do want to deliver insurance to some of these third world countries. They want to deliver crop insurance to different parts of Africa. Of course, to deliver crop insurance and parametric insurance, you do need weather data. Insurance products are really good on the blockchain, however, you need a lot of data to do this. We do know that Chainlink has partnered with tons of different insurance companies. In fact, Chainlink has partnered with the biggest parametric insurance company in the entire world, which is called Marsh Global. As a direct result, Cardano is dependent on Chainlink to actually get this insurance data and deliver it to third world countries. There is essentially no insurance products without Chainlink right now. There are no other oracles that can actually offer this much weather data, and this really is why Cardano has been forced to partner with Chainlink. There are no other options. Now, I want to show you a brief clip of Charles Hoskinson when he initially said he would never work with Chainlink. Charles Hoskinson initially said he didn't like Chainlink and he was going to use another oracle called Wolfram Alpha. However, since they have just partnered with Chainlink, this has clearly been proven wrong, and I suspect this is not because Charles wanted to partner with Chainlink, but this is because he needed to partner with Chainlink. I'll show the clip right now. Why Wolfram and not Chainlink? Because uh, Steve is a good friend and Wolfram's a great company, and uh, Wolfram doesn't have an army of trolls that attack me over the internet for no particular reason. I mean, seriously, guys, what do you want to accomplish? It's, you're a layer two application. You're multi-chain. Work with everybody. So, as we can see, Charles Hoskinson does not like Chainlink, and he never wanted to use Chainlink. Now, the reason that Charles Hoskinson said he doesn't like Chainlink is because he doesn't like the community. This, to me, is actually a little bit surprising, as the Chainlink community tends to be relatively harmless. To every post that somebody makes, all people do is respond with frog memes. Now, I am quite surprised that Charles Hoskinson feels this hostile against the Chainlink community. However, it doesn't really matter. Just saying that a couple thousand people on Twitter is a reason that you're not going to use an Oracle network for your entire blockchain makes completely no sense, and it is unbelievably biased. Anyway, Cardano clearly had to use Chainlink here, so there was clearly no other option for Cardano here. Now, Charles said that he was going to use another oracle called Wolfram Alpha, whereby he actually knew the founder of Wolfram Alpha. 
Clearly, Charles Hoskinson has had to go with Chainlink and not the Oracle he wanted to go with. Now, the obvious reason for this is because Chainlink is a significantly better Oracle. It has significantly more data and it has a lot more features to it than, say, Wolfram Alpha would have. So Charles Hoskinson was essentially forced to go with Chainlink if he wanted Cardano to be successful. So, let's look at the pros and cons for this merge for both Chainlink and Cardano. Now, the pros for Cardano are very, very simple. For Cardano to actually use any decentralized finance and access any quality data and get a good ecosystem going, it needs Chainlink. It can't do this without Chainlink. So overall, this is a massive net positive for Cardano and this will help Cardano significantly. Now, there really are no negatives for Cardano. So let's get into the positives and negatives for Chainlink. Of course, this is overall a positive for Chainlink. This is because when more and more people are using decentralized finance and using Chainlink's data, they need to buy more and more Link tokens in order to pay for these services, which pushes up the price of Chainlink. So overall, Cardano integrating with Chainlink will help Chainlink quite significantly, and this definitely is a good partnership for Chainlink. The next thing that it will also help with is there are probably a lot of Cardano maximalists. A lot of people who really love Cardano and hate other blockchains like Chainlink and Ethereum. Well, now that they're using Chainlink, they essentially do need to actually buy Link tokens for this data in some form or another, and they are going to have to learn to love Chainlink. They will need to use Chainlink and rely on it, and this will result in a lot of Cardano maxis liking Chainlink. So overall, I do think this is a net positive for Chainlink. Now, I do know that a lot of people in the Chainlink community don't like Cardano, and this is because of their very, very slow approach to building. So overall, if you don't like Cardano, I wouldn't worry too much about this news. This overall is a positive for Chainlink. However, if you think Cardano is a useless blockchain, that doesn't really matter in this scenario. If Cardano crashes and dies, well, Chainlink is still used on all of the other blockchains. So overall, this can only really be taken as a positive. Now, I do want to give my thoughts on the Cardano blockchain. Cardano is a blockchain that has taken about four years to get up and running because they've said that they wanted to do a research-based approach. Now, in my opinion, I don't think this is a scam. I do genuinely believe that Charles is actually trying to make a blockchain here that does work. We will see if this happens or not. It is yet to be properly determined. Anyway, there are actually a few bits of Cardano's technology that makes me a little bit bearish on the chain. The first thing is to do with decentralized finance. Now, essentially, Cardano has an extended UTXO model. What this means is it's a very different model from what Ethereum has. Basically, a blockchain like Ethereum has an account-based model. This means that if John has $10 in his wallet and then John sends $5 to Sally, well, there's a $5 credit in Sally's account and a $5 debit in John's account. This is a very simple model and this is what Ethereum has and it works very, very well. Now, Cardano goes off a UTXO model or an extended UTXO model. Essentially, what a UTXO model does is it means that if John has $10 in his account and John sends $5 to Sally, well, John essentially sends $5 to Sally and then $5 to himself. So this results in the same effect as an account-based model. However, it's just a little bit different. This is what Bitcoin uses. Now, when it's an extended UTXO model, this means that smart contracts are integrated into the mix. Now, there are actually a few problems with this extended UTXO model. Essentially, the main problem with an EUTXO model is that you can only do one transaction every 20 seconds per person. This essentially makes it impossible to do a lot of different things in decentralized finance, such as flash loans, where you do multiple transactions in a single block. At a high level, it is quite difficult for me to tell you why this is so bad, as it is difficult to understand all of the intricate details of the decentralized finance applications that do rely on applications and rely on multiple transactions being within one block. However, overall, I'm not that convinced that Cardano's decentralized finance ecosystem is actually going to work too well, and it's really because of this extended UTXO model. Now, in my opinion, Cardano is probably not the best 
best layer one and overall many of you do know that I believe Ethereum is by far the best layer one. Essentially the more that I look into these other blockchains and the more that I deep dive into how their technology works the more bearish I become on everything else. A lot of these other chains brand themselves as Ethereum killers and really the answer to all of Ethereum's problems. However the problem with a lot of these chains is they just directly copy Ethereum and then they raise the gas limit of Ethereum which makes them do a bit more transactions per second while sacrificing decentralization. Now Cardano has added a bit of technology in here, they have done some cool stuff, however I really don't think it's a threat to Ethereum whatsoever. And I know a lot of other Chainlink Marines do like blockchains like Avalanche and they do think some of these chains are great, however at the end of the day a lot of other chains like Avalanche have directly copied everything that Ethereum has done, added a few bits of technology that they haven't really implemented just yet and then when they get a lot of transactions per second the chain starts breaking. Solana's chain completely broke just the other day and a lot of these layer ones aren't working too well. Anyway, Overall, I am glad that Chainlink's integrating with a lot of these other chains, because at the end of the day, anyone can pick whatever layer one they want to use. If people want to use Cardano, that's up to them. They can give Cardano value and they can use it. If people want to use Avalanche, that's up to them. If people want to use Ethereum, that's up to, the, up to them. However, Chainlink is always going to be winning. No matter what blockchain anybody is using, Chainlink will always win. And this is because Chainlink is really needed and requisite to any any blockchain in the space and this is why I have it as a major part of my portfolio. Anyway this brings us to the end of the video. If you enjoyed the video like and subscribe to the channel. We're coming up on 750 subscribers and it would be much appreciated. Thanks for watching the video.